When you want to interface an LED to a microcontroller, you'll have either this type of circuit or this type of circuit here. The LED itself has to have, in either case, a current limiting resistor. If more current goes through this than it can handle, and that current is referred to as I max or maximum current, if more current than that value goes through here, the LED itself will burn out. So that's why we have to have a proper current limiting resistor here. Now the microcontroller will see this circuit here as a load. Whether it's this circuit or this circuit, it sees it as a load. In this case, if it produces 3.3 volts, and this side here is a ground, we have 3.3 volts going to ground, and that 3.3 volts has the source current to drive it to ground in order to turn on the LED. So one, which is 3.3 volts, will turn on the LED. Zero, here meaning zero volts, on both sides means there's no difference in potential, which means there's no current flow, and the LED will stay off. In this case, we have 3.3 volts sitting here, and the load that it sees here will need to have a sink of current because if this is 3.3 volts on both sides, no flow of current, the LED is off. If this has ground here or zero, then it's going to have to sink the current on the output pin in order to turn on the LED that we've got here. Now on the microcontroller, there's a number of ports. There's port A, port B, port C, and so forth. And each one of these ports has 32 pins associated with it. If we take a look here, we have PTB22, or port B, pin 22, is connected to our red LED. We have port E, pin 26, connected to our green LED. And port B, pin 21, connected to our blue LED. Now our RGB LED is here. Now if we were using something like Kinetis Design Studio to program these LEDs, we'd have to definitely know all of this information here in order to make sure we can turn on off our various LEDs. However, our cloud compiler has a hardware abstraction layer, which means we don't need to have this information. But let's take a look and see which of the two types of LED interfaces we have here. Notice this is 3.3 volts going through here to our LEDs, and then our LEDs are then connected up to our microcontroller port pins. What that means is that we have the second interface here, that 3.3 volts or 1 turns it off and a 0 turns it on. Now you'll also notice that we have different types of resistors here. We have 270 here and here on our blue and our green LEDs, but we have 576 ohms here on our red LED. And we also have a resistance going in to begin with before we start here. So the total resistance that we have here is different. If we look down here, it says different colored LEDs will have different values for IMAX. And uh, also, we're going to find that we have Ohm's Law applying here. Now, if we click on here, it's going to give you a calculator. And you can actually calculate V equals IR and try out some of the values that we've got here. Now, you'll see that the power is going to be different as well. Power is voltage times current, whereas voltage is current times resistance. Now we're more worried about this one here because what we're going to find is a red LED. If you look at your spectrum, we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. And on the red end here, it has lower energy, whereas on the violet end here, it has it requires more energy to produce that actual color. So one of the things you're going to find is that one of the reasons why the green LEDs have less resistance here, and when you do the power calculation, it requires more power to generate these than it does the red. However, if you want the red, green, and blue to look the same, we have to reduce the amount of power going to the red and increase the amount of power going to the blue. And you can see that if you go through the Ohm's Law link here and do a calculation based on the power.